Mr. Wilson teaches reductive charcoal drawing still life. Um, today we're going to go through how to make a still life. Um, so I've got my still life set up here in the background. I've got a bunch of different options to pick from. I'm going to be drawing a portion that is of the fruit binoculars, this background here. So this is the finished version of what I came up with. I'll go through the steps. I'll show you time lapse of how everything is done. Um, but before we get started, um, we'll just talk about some supplies. So you will need the paper, obviously, the surface that you're going to be working on. This one was done with compressed charcoal, um, so this will look like a small um, rectangle of charcoal that's been compressed together, usually really dark. Um, I also use vine or willow char charcoal, um, which you don't necessarily need, but it does make it a little easier. It's a tinier version of that. Um, softer, and then I also am using a charcoal pencil. So this is a 6B. Um, this is an extra soft, really dark charcoal. They do make different versions, um, so I use the dark. Helps with the blending process. Um, I also have tape because I'm putting it on this easel here, but you can work right from the table. It does um, make a difference when you're drawing if you've got it upright or down. For still lifes, it's better to stand or to sit and have this propped upright, um, as it will help with perspective. Um, and I also have paper towels that I use when I um, create the background, um, but a rag will work as that as well. Basically, any soft surface you can sort of um, rub around. And then, of course, you need the object you're going to be drawing or objects placed on the table. Um, and then a strong source of light. So we're using the windows here as our source of light. Um, but if you're doing this in your house, you can put a spotlight, you can put a lamp, just give it some sort of light source that does help um, with the drawing part. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps, um, starting from the white paper all the way through. Um, so hope you enjoy and uh, follow along. Okay, so the first step um, we're gonna be working on in the reductive drawing is getting everything set up using your materials um, and prepping the paper. And so this is just regular drawing paper. This is 90 pound weight. Um, it really doesn't have to be anything special. I just picked something that's a little thicker so it can hold the charcoal better. And we're gonna be rubbing the paper back and forth so we don't want it to um, tear or break on us. So a good strong paper is best. Um, and I'm gonna put it onto the board so that it doesn't move, so tape it down. And then that's our first step. Um, after I get that done, I'm taking the compressed charcoal. So this is just regular black compressed charcoal. I'm going to start by just lightly coating the surface. So I'm not really pushing down super hard. I don't want tons of lines or streaks on it. So if you see a strong edge sort of showing through over and over, I should have to fix that because I do have a couple on mine. So after I do one way, going to go back and forth the opposite way and this should hopefully help get rid of some of those lines. Um, so this is why it's called reductive. So when you take the paper, when you darken first, we're going from the darks to the lights um, versus additive, which is just adding the medium right on the paper. So this is a, a different way of working than what most of you are probably used to, um, but it does make for some nice blending because you're starting with your gray tone. So now we go dark to light, back and forth, whereas on an additive paper you have to go from your light to your uh, mid-tone to your dark. So this helps dictate where some of those colors would be because we've already got one tone in it. Um, now I'm doing circles across. This helps fill in all the empty space. You still will have some grit of the original charcoal, so there will be darker parts. I'm not super concerned with those. A lot of the objects I'm going to be drawing will have natural textures that I'll fix as I go. And I'm also not worried about getting every single part of the paper as this is going to be matted. And I'll be working in the center anyways. After I do the circles, I usually just go back and forth making sure that I coat all the areas. And that's the prep. So that's adding in all the um, compressed charcoal. Next I'm using my vine charcoal, or a willow charcoal, so this is um, a much lighter, thinner piece. I'm going to come around the other side so I can sketch what I see, um, but next I'm going to be drawing in the still life. Um, so when you're working on a still life, you're going to want to choose um, aspects that you can handle, try to fill up the page, usually draw a little bigger than what you're seeing. Um, but I'm not tackling every single thing on that page, I'm just working on one. So I'm choosing, let me can see on the camera, the fruit bowl with the binoculars over there. So because this is the willow or the vine charcoal, when I draw on it, um, you can see the little lines show up. It will automatically disappear if I just take my hand and sort of blend it out. So this is nice for sketching. This is the under sketch um, of what I want this to look like. So I'm going to start with just basic shapes. So I'm going to work on where this bowl would be. 
gonna fall somewhere in this region. And we've got this edge. I'm seeing a lot of right, and then my main fruit here is this apple. This area I'm seeing the edge of the lemon. the edge of the bowl. And you might be getting a little different angle from that camera versus my viewpoint. Um, so trust your viewpoint and use it to your advantage. So make sure you're drawing all those angles correct. There it is, the other lemon. And we got some fabric that comes through here. Cuts across. See, this part comes up. So we've got our box in the background that will somewhere in this area here. And then we need to place our binoculars. And you can adjust as you go. Um, so this is the basics of just sketching things out. Um, you can also do some measuring techniques. Um, so I'll try and come to this side so you can see on the camera. So if I'm measuring angles, um, what I do is I take my logo and my vine. Um, I'm going to hold it so from the edge of the binoculars to the edge of the bowl. I'm creating the angle. And I'm going to check to see if that's accurate with this. I'm using that same angle that I'm creating from the viewpoint in the right way. And then let's say if I want to check the banana, I'm going to check the angle, and then I can follow it along and make sure it follows that. So a lot of times for measuring angles, um, this piece is really good because it's thin. You can also measure um, the size of them. So for the apple, I'm holding the edge of my fingernail to the top of that. So that's about the size of the apple. And if I go to orange, it should be the exact same size. So same thing if I'm holding it up to here, edge of apple, edge of orange, found out this is actually a little tall. So that'll help you bring some of these in. Um, so those are the two sketching techniques. That's the prep for this. I'm gonna switch over to um, the charcoal and show you that next step. Okay, so I've um, jumped ahead quite a bit and I filled in most of this um, center area just so you can see the effect we're going for. Um, when you're using the charcoal, um, and you're done doing the protective, you're done doing the sketching, this is um, the values we're looking for. So we're finding the darkest areas first and sort of working our way out. We're adding texture, we're going back in and finding some highlights. So I'm going to work a little bit more in this corner. Um, so in the background you can see a little bit of the still life that I'm working from still, but I'm going to close up and work from here. So I'll start working on the fabric that sort of goes underneath the binoculars and try to describe it. Um, as I go, I'll keep my hand out of the way so you can see it. Um, so whenever you have a fold or you have something in front of another object, so like I did on the fruit here, you can see I'm pulling out the darks and then fading it. So I started doing this here as well. So using your charcoal pencil, start to have those colors come out and then lightly blend it. You can use your finger or you can use the stump. Um, this area right here is going to be very, very dark because it's not only black fabric, but it's also in the background two separate objects. I'm going to start by just filling that in. Again, you can use your pencil or the stump, and I can start to pull some of that color out of there. And I'm also going to give a little bit more shade to the bowl. Start moving it up just a touch. Um, so the fabric run through right, that runs through here has got a highlight. So that's where one of the folds is. Let's check where our other object. So we've got a couple other folds that are coming through as well. So we've got two other ones, so I'm going to start. by bringing in the darkest shadow, followed by blending it out. I'm just lightly releasing pressure as I go. And then taking our 
eye eraser and finding those highlights back in and softening them up just a little bit. And we have another shadow here. Same thing, finding in the shadow. All around this object here. We want to add just a little bit of a shadow fading out. That's just going to help with the illusion that this goes back further in space. And the closer you get to the bottom here, this is our piece of fabric coming through. And again, finding the highlight. And as you can see, the fabric is now looking like it's rippling through, it's got folds in it, um, it's got some depth versus just adding contour lines. Um, so that's the basic explanation of what you're going to be doing for each um, area. So finding those darks, finding the lights, merging them together and blending them out. Um, so the rest of this, I'm just going to work a little bit and I'm going to put the, the camera on a lap so you can see it happen really fast and I'll just start to fill in. Um, and then from there you can start to see the whole piece come together, okay? of this as I finish. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about what happened um, as I work. So the areas that you didn't get to catch were some of this fabric in the background and the actual background itself. Um, as I went on to the um, background, I started looking at tones, so seeing what was light, seeing what was darker. Um, so this is the whiter fabric in the front, the black um, in the back. And as I went through here, I also added some more shading to sink that back in the space and looked at a lot of these lines as I shaded in. Um, the background is up to you. It does usually stand out if you go really, really dark or really light. I chose to erase out all that original reductive drawing I did because a lot of the objects near here were darker. Um, so you can decide based off that. Um, but if you really want to stand out, we need some extreme contrast in between the two. So I went through and I took um, a regular eraser, outlined everything, sort of blended it up and just got rid of a lot of the color. You're not going to erase out every single piece of charcoal on there. Um, it will stain the paper. Um, so if you want it to be really, really crisp, that's something that you're going to have to do added a drawing. Um, but you will get a nice contrast between the two, and it's really going to stand out. So that's up to you. Um, so this is the finished product of it. This is reductive charcoal drawing. Um, still Life, if you have any questions, you can comment. I can try to answer them for you. You can look up some of our YouTube videos. Um, but hope you enjoyed, and give our video a like and subscribe.